everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about all the books that I read in the month of October. I had a fantastic reading month in October because I enjoyed every single book that I read. It's just gonna be cute and chatty because this is a wrap up and I feel like reading wrap ups are always just like a great moment, you know? We're just here together, we're just having a bit of a talk. Anyway. Let's talk about October. I noticed that lately I have really not been in the mood to listen to audiobooks, which is the reason that I'm not reading as many books as before. I listened to one audiobook this month, but that's a bit different. I'll explain that later, but I tried. I tried listening to A Study in Charlotte. I tried listening to the... What was it? The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter? Something like that. And I just can't get into anything. Even though there's nothing wrong with those stories, I just can't find like the time and energy to listen to an audiobook. Like whenever I have like a moment where I would normally listen to audiobooks, like when I'm cooking or doing Etsy stuff or just writing things down, I noticed that I'd rather listen to music instead of an audiobook. So I don't know why. I'm just not really on an audiobook kick right now, which is kind of a waste of my Storytel subscription, but oh well, that's probably how they make all their money <laughs> of people like me who pay them but then don't listen to audiobooks. <laughs> anyway, let us begin with the first book that I read this month, a horror book. Oh, by the way, I read two horror books this month, which is very unlike me. But the first one that I read is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is the book that I read for the book club that I and Sabine from Sabine's Book Nook host called the World Readers Book Club because this one takes place in Mexico and there will be a live show for it on the 7th of November. There's information on it on our Twitter. So this is a gothic horror novel but this takes place in 1950s Mexico and it's about this socialite, very academic, very sassy, very clever woman and she goes to this mansion where his where her cousin is married to this kind of attractive also kind of very mostly very creepy men. She's going to this mansion to kind of figure out what's going on there. I have a hard time talking about this book because it started off not being super interesting. In the beginning not much happens and it really feels like one of those stories where everything is kind of happening to the main character and the main character doesn't really do much. People are just talking to her, explaining about this mansion and about the history of the family. There are a lot of info dumps where other side characters will literally just sit down and tell a story to the main character. I don't think that's the most immersive way of telling a story. But the more this only 300 page story progressed, especially in the last 100 pages of this book, ooh, then it went like, just like, shut up. And suddenly it was like really good. Like my enjoyment of this book went like, uh, woo. <laughs> Let me consult my notes. So it's a bit difficult for me to like give this a rating because the ending was so immersive and I was so invested in it and I really felt like the atmosphere and the creepiness, but it just took a long time to get there. More things that I did really like were just the atmosphere. It's one of those horror books that's not, it's not scary because there's not gonna be any, any jump scares. It, are jump scares a thing in books? Clearly I don't really read horror very much, but it's not like super scary. It's more atmospheric and just the situation is scary. Sylvia Moreno Garcia does a really good job at creating this ambiance. There's a lot of mushroom imagery. One of the themes in the story is that the creepy mansion owner is very much into eugenics, uh, which in itself is already extremely creepy. So it's just the situation of the story that really makes it like gothic and scary. And this book is very visual. A lot of the scary things are just kind of like visual imagery and uh, that I think would have scared me more if it was, for example, on the screen. And I know this is going to be adapted into a TV show and I think a lot of the things that happen in this book would, you know, pack even more of a punch if you see it on the screen because I always have when something is visually scary it's more inf impactful if you see it on screen because it's just it just happens to you whereas in a book you're reading it so you kind of have control over how you want to present it to yourself if that makes sense but overall i enjoyed this if you want to hear spoilery thoughts there will be a live show on the 7th of november and i think i would give this like a 
three and a half stars. Then let's just quickly talk about the audiobook that I listened to and that is I listened to the audiobook for The Gilded Wolves because I wanted to reread this one before the sequel comes out to The Silvered Silver Prince which actually already came out a month ago. It just took me a really long time to get through the audiobook because like I said I wasn't really feeling the audiobook vibes. In case you missed it this was my favorite book of 2019 uh, so I just wanted to you know make sure I had a good refresher. I didn't really listen to the audiobook super closely because I just kind of wanted to get a gist of what was going on in the story so I can't give you like a detailed ooh first read versus a reread situation because obviously since I only kind of passively listened to it I wasn't as invested into the story so I'll be brief about it but just to summarize why I love this book. Oh, maybe I should tell you what this book is about. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> this is like an alternate history fantasy that takes place in Paris in the 19th century. And we follow like this group of characters who all have their own interesting backstory and they team up to go on this heist, find this ancient artifact that has like magical, well, not magical, but has something to do with the magic system in this world. And the magic system in this book is kind of like manipulating objects, having like godly powers, things like that, turning nothing into something is a very big theme. There's a lot of mythology in this book. This book pulls from mythology from all over the world, so if you're a mythology fan you get all of them in this one. And there's a lot of puzzles and riddles in this because the whole thing of this book is that the characters are constantly having to solve puzzles to get further into the plot and I love that. Love that so much. If any book contains any kind of like puzzle, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Hello, so, oops. <laughs> I just poured my heart out to the camera about how insecure about my channel and apparently the camera has just stopped recording so I didn't record any of that. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, but I do want to share, I was just talking about how Sometimes I just don't know what my videos are supposed to be because I really want this video to be like nice and relaxing Like we're just having a talk together But then I have other videos like my popular books I didn't like or my six of crows cooking video that are Not relaxing at all and they're way more like chaotic and entertaining And then I'm like I feel like there's no consistency on my channel and then I get scared about like who I want to be on this channel and the types of videos that I want to make because you know like all the booktubers that I love to watch have such amazing personalities and like their whole own style and aesthetic that's like consistent over every video and I'm just here like I don't know what I'm doing like I don't even have a consistent personality in real life how am I supposed to like do it on the internet it's getting really dark it's just suddenly there was just a cloud just whew, darkness. It's just like it's the middle of the- oh it's starting to rain. Ambiance great but I would like some light. Let's just say that it's a vibe okay? That's just gonna be my brand. Not well lit video. <laughs> anyway let's just move on to the next book I read which it was Wilder Girls by Rory Power. I lent this from my housemate uh, so I already returned it but this is such a divisive book like it's has a 3.5 rating on Goodreads, which is super low for a YA book. It has been on so many people's like most disappointing books of the year list, but then there are also a lot of other people who actually really loved it and it's like one of their new favorites. So I was excited to see what I thought of this. This is like a YA horror mystery novel about a bunch of girls on this island, on this school, and they all have mutations that change their bodies in like really weird ways like some girls get scales other girls grow like a second spine there's just a lot of kind of like body gore pretty action-packed like there's a lot of things happening lots of action constant going and just trying to figure out what's going on and i actually really enjoyed it <laughs> i think the first great thing about this book is the writing style because the writing really does such a good job at creating this ominous atmosphere that feels very bleak like whenever i was reading this book i just felt bad <laughs> but in a good way you know like it felt super bleak and just dystopian and apocalyptic and as if everything was kind of happening in in a haze and that really worked and so the characters are all pretty distant you don't really get to know them but that only adds to that feeling of just 
distance and dissociation and I still really cared about the characters even though we don't get to know them very well they do have very clear personalities and interesting flaws and I really enjoyed these girls and there's a sapphic romance in here that it's not really on the forefront it's not a romance book in any way but it is nice so the ending of the book and this I don't think this is really a spoiler but basically you don't really get a lot of answers in this book and that turned a lot of people off which I kind of understand I thought the ending could have been a little bit more satisfying but personally Here's like my theory on the thing. I think the theme of this book is kind of like the fear of the unknown. The scariness of this book, you know, the horror aspect of this book comes from this like very creepy feeling of just having your body turn itself against you and you just can't change anything about it and you don't know what's going on. You don't know why these things are happening. You know, like that's kind of the reality. There are so many things that we don't know and that can be very scary and it can be extremely horrifying to kind of be presented with the fact like yeah sometimes scary shit happens and you don't understand it and people try to find out what's going on but they, they they never find an answer and no one knows what's going on and you also never get an answer and I think that this story would have actually been cheapened if we got a very definitive clear explanation of everything that was going on because that's where the fear came from like the scariness of this book was because we didn't know where anything was coming from. Sometimes that's a point in horror, if I'm correct. I don't know. I don't know a lot about horror, but um, yeah, I enjoyed this and I gave it four stars. Would recommend. I think you would really like Wilder Girls if you like horror movies like that, like uh, Annihilation or The Thing or The Mist that very much focus on this unknown thing that you never really find out what it is and that's kind of what freaks you out about it and you like being freaked out about it because that's kind of the point of horror. <laughs> then I think you're also really gonna enjoy Wilder Girls. And then the last book that I read this month, very different from all the other ones, is Get Alive, Chloe Brown, which is an adult romance novel, which I never read. Uh, and I realized after reading this book that I should read more romance because this was great. This is about this girl named Chloe Brown who has like a near death experience. And then she's like, oh my gosh, my life is so boring. I need to get a life. And she makes this list of things that she wants to do, like enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorbike, have meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex and do something bad. <laughs> and then she meets her neighbor and he's kind of cute and they don't really like each other at first but they're gonna help each other with some work stuff and of course they're kind of attracted to each other and they fall in love and it's really cute <laughs> the characters first of all wonderful we have our main character who also deals with a chronic illness which i really enjoyed reading well i didn't enjoy reading about it but you know it was interesting to read about that to read about a character that has this problem so you can understand it a little bit more and i really liked how the love interest the man is kind of the more like emotional soft of the two and he also just came out of an abusive relationship so he's also dealing with that so very interesting characters and what i really like about this book is that it strikes that perfect balance between remaining steamy throughout the book but also building up the characters because with the few romance books that I've read, my experience is that usually like at the beginning, you know, you have that will they won't they and it's very steamy and then the rest of the book is like fo focusing on the characters and their development. But Talia Hibber did a really good job at like interweaving the two constantly where it like the entire book is pretty steamy, but also throughout the entire book you're getting to know the characters and it's not like a a trade-off where you get one or the other. I don't know if that makes sense how I described it, but that's how I experienced it. And what did I write down? Yeah, that it's just a really cute romance, you know, nothing toxic about it. They're actually, you know, so good to each other. And of course there was conflict because, I mean, it's a romance book, but none of the conflict was annoying to me because you just understand where the, co the conflict comes from, knowing these characters and who they are and what their flaws are. The conflict just makes sense. And it also gets resolved in like a very healthy, mature way, which I love to see. So I can't wait to read the second book like the comp companion novel where we follow Danny Brown, Chloe Brown's sister and I heard that that one's even better so I'm excited about that. Those are all the books that I read in October. Not as much as I well actually it is as much as I usually read it's just that the past six months I've been reading way more than normal 
and now I'm going back to normal <laughs> but it doesn't really matter because to me it's more important that I enjoy the books that I read. Uh, oh, let me show you which book I'm reading right now. I'm reading A Deadly Education by Naomi Novak, the highly anticipated new book by one of my favorite authors. Uh, so I'll talk about this one next month. Dark Academia, Fantasy, Magical School. I'm excited. So those were all the books that I read. Let me know what your favorite book was. I think I think my favorite book this month was actually Get a Life, Chloe Brown. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and you can just subscribe if you want. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another one. Goodbye!